Hey everybody, welcome to the show. I'm your host Sandman. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Covert Instruments FNG pick set. Let's get into it. First off, I'm not known for my brevity. I love doing long format videos. I think it's very cathartic. I enjoy it. I love making that connection with people that do stick around and watch a 40 minute product review, but some of you are not going to want to stick around for all of that. So I'm going to go ahead and get into the nitty gritty and then we'll jump into my old format. So let's go ahead and talk about this set. First off, I'm not really into collecting the little Timmy pick sets. I don't believe also that there is a beginner, intermediate, or advanced pick set. I think we are all at just a different place in our life and we all have a different budget that we want to utilize when we invest in a new hobby. So some people will reach out to me and we go, hey, Sandman, I'm a big Tim, just like you. Just point me to the best lock picks that money can buy and I will drop that $200. And I'm like, okay, man, yeah, no problem. And some people are like, hey, man, like, you know, I, I only have like 25, 30 bucks to work with. What's the best tools that I can buy for that cost? And I'm like, hey, man, I got you covered with that as well. However, this isn't a classification all on its own. This thing is $9.50, which is amazing. There are no other pick sets on the market that I'm from that I'm aware of. I have over 40 different lock pick sets in my collection. There are about 40 different manufacturers. There are about six of them are tier one, tier one based off of the steel handles, polish, variety, and quality control. And only four manufacturers actually use the strongest pick steel on the market, which this lock pick set has. It is using 301 high yield stainless steel, which puts out at about 280,000 pounds of square inch of ultimate tensile strength. There are about five different tool steels that are currently on the market. 301 high yield, 420 stainless, 1095 carbon, 301 full hard, and titanium grade five. Now, these numbers are just best estimates. It all depends on the process of which they are using their annealing or their heating or anything like that. But we all know that 301 high yield is the strongest tool steel on the market, hands down. And there are only four manufacturers that offer this tool steel, Covert Instruments being one of them. So that makes this company that makes this pick set and company a tier one level brand and set. It is best of the best. It is high quality. It is highly functional and the transparency there. We know everything about this pick set, my friends. Let's talk about the functionality. I will pull out all the tools and show them individually, but a lot of these tools, there's been a lot of consulting done by Christina Palmer. Even Jimmy Longs did some consulting for Covert Instruments over the past couple of years. And we have consulting with Lock Picking Lawyer as he is a part owner in the company. So Covert Instruments has high functionality in all of their tools. So this is one of the best tool sets you can buy. At $9.50, it's a freaking steal. I highly recommend it to anybody. And why am I doing this review? I normally don't do these smaller little Timmy sets. I normally do larger sets because I've been going to a lot of lock sport meetups lately. I've been going to lock sport meetups for over 10 years. I've been going to the Longhorn Lock Pickers here in Austin, which is a meetup group that's been meeting since 2007. I've been going to that group since 2013, at least once or twice a year. I've been to the East End Lock Sport Meetup in Houston. I've been to Alamo City in San Antonio, the Alamo City Lock Sport Group, and I've been to Bobcat Lock Sport in San Marcos. And I've competed in lock picking competitions, and I uh, currently a purple belt in the Reddit Karate lock picking belt system. So I am very active in this. I'm also a formally trained locksmith. I was a locksmith in 2010 and again in 2016. And so I just happen to know a lot about lock sport. I've been in the hobby for 15 years. So it's easy for me to say when I see something that's good quality, what it is. But you'll always get somebody saying, no, uh Sandman, I heard that blah, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just not true. So I have to make videos to prove everybody wrong. The FNG, regular price, $9.50. I actually saw these on sale for like $8 or $8.50. It was incredible um, during uh, Black Friday. That's craziness. So taxes and shipping calculated at checkout. The FNG stands for freaking new guy, a term of endearment used by battle-hardened soldiers to describe their newly arrived or green comrades. When it comes to picking, we were all once an FNG, so we know what beginners are looking for, an inexpensive way to try their hand at picking to see if they want to continue their journey. Unfortunately, many start with that cheap, crappy beginner's kit. After two minutes, they inevitably come to the realization that they like picking, but they're now bent tools suck. 
Into the junk pile they go. Enter the FNG. For under $10, you get the best Three best tools to get started. The Holy Trinity of Picking. A short hook, a wave rake, and a 40 thousandths double-ended turning tool. These are straight out of the Genesis set. The Genesis pick set being this one by Covert Instruments. So, unlike most inexpensive kits, are made of top quality steel. You also get a clear acrylic lock. This is not meant to be a practice lock, but rather a demonstration lock. This is where you can see the process of lock picking and train your hand to manipulate the internal components. When you are done, you can move on to more useful practice tools like our CI practice lock and the lock sport trainer. You keep the acrylic lock for showing your friends and other FNGs the ropes. The FNG is not only great for beginners, but also makes the perfect gift for friends with whom you want to share your new hobby. I can, couldn't agree more. I have just about every lock pick set on the market, but when I go to these lock sport meetup groups, we stick around for three to four hours and we get people that pop in, specifically here in Austin, we meet at what's called a Batch Craft Kalachi and Beer. I think that's what it's called. It's crazy. It's just, it, it couldn't get more hipster than that. But they sell kolaches and they sell cakes and muffins and then they sell beer and it is what it is. I don't even drink, but I go for the food and the camaraderie and for the lock picking, of course. And I will have people regularly, about every 20, 30 minutes, a new uh, lock picker. Somebody will just show up and be like, what are you guys doing over here? It looks amazing. And we tell them about lock sport. We tell them about lock picking. We teach them about lock smithing. We teach them about how a lock functions and we get them to pick their very first lock. Enter the FNG. The FNG is the perfect lock pick kit to take with you to a lock sport meetup for newbies to give it a try or if they want to buy it from you or if they want to know what is the most inexpensive lock pick set to purchase on the market because they're feeling a little uh, intimidated of getting into a new hobby and they don't even know the legalities for their state. They don't even know, they even know this thing was a hobby. This is the best way to get them into it. So let's talk about what you get with this. We have the clear uh, bag here, which is very freaking durable. I don't know if I would trust just putting my picks in here, but this is not a bad start. We do have the case. I would rather keep my picks in here for sure. And then we have the lock. Let's go ahead and just discuss this clear acrylic lock. Now I collect cutaways primarily. I do have a lot of these acrylic locks as well. These are great for demonstrating to people how a lock works. We have the lock body. We have the lock plug. We have a keyway. We have a key. There's warding in a keyway that creates um, key restriction or excuse me, a restricted access. So only a specific key can fit inside of this plug or that keyway. And then as we rotate the plug, we can see that there are seven key pins and seven driver pins. And that when we rotate clockwise, we can see that there is a separation between those key pins and those driver pins. And that is called the shear line. So we are trying to mimic that when we pick a lock. The great thing about this acrylic cutaway lock is it's essentially for free. The tools are worth the $9.50. The lock is free. If you try to buy this lock on Amazon, it's going to run you about $15 to $25. The other lock pick manufacturers such as thinkpeterson.com is going to sell this for $25 to $35. Sparrow sells this for about $20 and you can only buy it inside of their, uh, their EOD uh, the EOD full kit. So it prices out to be about $20. So you're essentially getting this for free. It is what it is. So let's go ahead and talk about the tools. As I mentioned, these are actually made of the strongest tool steel on the market. We have a short hook, which is the most common pick you're going to use. We have a rake. I think that's called a quint rake. And then we also have our turning tool, which is double ended. And let's go ahead and get started with that. Turning tools are required for rotating the plug of a lock and we do so by creating a binding order in the lock and then we manipulate the pins that are binding first. We don't need to go into that big discussion here today, but the turning tool has two ends. We have a short end right here and we have a long end. This particular turning tool is measured at 40 thousandths of an inch or 0 0.40 inches. So we would take the long end, we put it at the bottom of the keyway. We have a top of the keyway and the bottom of the keyway. The pin stack should be at the top. We are going to take the turning tool, place it at the bottom of the keyway, and we are going to attempt raking first using our quint rake, just like this. Oh, wow. And I already got an open, my friends. Who said this isn't a practice lock? That was wonderful. So 
that's exactly what I wanted to get across to this set is we have a rake, this uh, cycloid rake, I believe it's called, or a quint or something like that. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know the exact name for it, but there's also like 50 different types of rakes on the market. It is what it is. But this rake is specifically designed for padlocks, this lower profile here, we want to use this for padlocks. The larger rakes that we see in larger pick sets, such as the Genesis set, like this one here, this quad rake right here, is really great for quick set and schleg or SC1 keyways that you see on residential doorways. This one is perfect for uh, padlocks and I couldn't have demonstrated that better. We showed bottom of keyway, or excuse me, bottom of keyway tension by placing the turning tool at the bottom of the keyway and raking that lock open super easy. Now we're going to demonstrate top of keyway. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna put it at the top of the keyway right here and I'm gonna apply turning force and my goal is to pick single pin picking. Now it's not gonna be super easy on this lock even though it is acrylic clear acrylic cutaway, there are seven pins. Let me demonstrate this on a much easier lock that is really great for practicing. That is this Brinks lock. This Brinks, I think is like a 30 millimeter. I bought this at Walmart, a pack of two for like 10 bucks. I'm gonna take this tool, place it at the top of the keyway. I'm gonna take my short hook like this, place it at the bottom of the keyway. So now I have all of this room to work and I'm gonna lift pin by pin, one pin at a time until I can rotate the plug. So I'm gonna feel the back pin first. So pin four, gotta click out of four, pin three, Gotta click out of three, pin two, gotta click out of two. Let's try pin one, nothing. Let's see if I missed anything. That was pin two, pin one. Was the culprit, that's it. So that's called single pin picking. Why do we wanna learn single pin picking? Why can't we just rake everything? Sometimes locks have security pins like this American 1100 right here. So this lock has five key pins, but it also has serrations in those key pins and it has five security pins. So this is gonna be a mix of serrated spool or serrated driver pins and spool driver pins. So this is a green belt level lock on a scale of one to nine. This is a level four. I'm not gonna be able to rake this. I have to single pin pick it. So let's go ahead and give that a try. Got to click on five, nothing on four, nothing on, wait, got to click out of three, click out of two, click out of one, go back to five, got to click out of five. So these are all serrated driver pins. These are security pins, nothing out of four, got to click out of three, nothing out of two, got to click out of one. Let's go back to two, nothing on two, got to click out of three, Okay, let's go back to one. Oh, I think I just overset number one because it lifted and it didn't make a clicking sound. That's based off of the four pin states and we will do that in a future video. So let's try this again. Click out of five, three, two, and one. Let's go back again. Five, nothing on four, nothing on two. Oh, and we got it open. Look at that. So this is a green belt level lock and this guy just slayed it. So let's talk about these profiles. This is gonna be a traditional profile based off of HPC's uh, design of a short hook, which was probably invented around the mid 1950s in North America. And this rake right here was actually probably consulted on by uh, a very famous lockpick designer by the name of Christina Palmer with collaboration with Lockpicking Lawyer. I absolutely love this. You're going to see these in every, like, oh gosh, like two thirds of the companies in the world today now use this type of rake. This is one of the most common rakes that you're gonna find on the market. I love it. Let's go ahead and try a couple more locks. So this is a security padlock, 40 millimeter, made in China. This is something you're gonna find at Walmart. This is a white belt level lock. Let's go ahead and try raking it. I'm gonna put my turning tool at the bottom of the keyway here and let's see if we can get an open since this is a real lock and not a acrylic lock. Let me see what's going on here. Oh, did I get it open? Nope. Oh, one more time, let's give it a try. You have to be careful. Sometimes you have these posts here. These You don't want to accidentally get your turning tool stuck on this guy. You wanna lift it up a little bit, get it out of the way and apply a uh, rotational tension. Let's go, let's go. You know why I can't do this? Because you're all watching. Everybody close your eyes for a second. 
Nobody look and don't stab your hand. There we go, and we got an open, awesome. Okay, let's talk about the turning tool real quick. So I do love this short hook, I do love the rake. Let's talk about that turning tool. Why do we only have one turning tool? Do we only need one turning tool? You are really only gonna find about three different thicknesses among turning tools across all 40 manufacturers, across all brands on the entire market. You're gonna see something around 30 thousandths, a 40 thousandths, and a 50 thousandths. Now that's not to say that all locks have the same size keyways, but let's talk about that. So we have a keyway here. This is a master 575. This is an orange belt level lock. This has security pins. And this lock has a keyway. The keyway is the space here in the plug that the key fits into. The inner diameter right here at the top of the keyway is going to be on average 30 to 50 thousandths in thickness. It has to be in that, uh, that range because all keys need to have at least, at the bare minimum, 20 thousandths right here at the top. Otherwise, it'll be too soft, it'll be brittle, it could, um, it could deform and wear out over time. You're never really gonna see these suckers much less than 30 thousandths. They're going to be anywhere between 30 to 50 thousandths and larger. Uh, lock keys that get used on an hourly basis, like institutional locks that you'll see in prison, those keys are really thick. So the keyways are super thick. So if I were to take uh, this guy right here and I were to try to measure here, so we're zeroed out, and I were to try to measure here the top of that key, we're looking at 37 thousandths. That means the inner diameter here has to be somewhere close to that. And we are looking at, let me pull this out, 50 thousandths. So any tool that is less than 50 thousandths will fit into this keyway. Coincidentally, one tool that is measured at 40 thousandths will probably fit into about 90%, if not more, of all keyways in North America, South America, and Europe. There are a lot of tight keyways that we see out of Japan, and um, I see a lot of tight keyways out of, let's say, uh, uh, Europe, like the Euro profile cylinders are pretty tight but this 40 thousandths is going to go far. I have no problem selecting a whole variety of locks in North America for that to fit. So let's give that a try. We have a representation of locks from white belt to black belt, and let's try the quick set. So this is a KW1. Let's see if it'll fit. Fits bottom of keyway, no problem, and it fits the top of the keyway, no problem. It's perfect for that. Let's take our Schleg SC1. This is the second most common uh, keyway in North America, and it fits bottom of keyway no problem, and it fits top of keyway no problem. Let's go ahead and go with our orange belt lock, which is next. These are not in order for some reason. And orange belt is actually a Y1 keyway. So this is the most common uh, keyway we're gonna see in Europe. And let's check out, oh, fits perfectly in bottom of keyway, and it fits snugly perfectly in top of QA. I love that. So a lot of thought has gone into this, which tool can somebody use? That's gonna be the ultimate universal tool. We have a Schleg Everest keyway, bottom of keyway works perfectly, top of keyway works perfectly. We That's a C123 keyway, I believe it's called. And then we have a best interchangeable cord. This is the most common commercial uh, core, and uh, this is gonna also be the most common keyway you're gonna see on the market today. Let's see. So if you were to go to, I don't know, any commercial space in North America is probably going to have an interchangeable core like this, and it's going to be either Best or Falcon, or it could be Schleg or Medica or something like that, but it's going to be this interchangeable core, and this keyway is super common. That's the bottom of keyway, and that's the top of keyway. I love that. Let's just keep cruising. Let's keep going on. So this is a Medico Biaxial. I believe this is an M3. Let's go with bottom of keyway here, and this is highly paracentric, but I can't, so I'm, I wouldn't want to rake this anyway, so I can't fit bottom of keyway. It fits perfectly top of keyway. I have to rotate those pins manually with my hook pick, so this is how I'm going to pick it regardless. So this is a perfect fit for Medico. Let's keep moving forward. We also have a Schleg Primus, so this fits perfectly bottom of keyway, 
and this 40 thousandths is gonna fit top of keyway there. And we also have a Medico M4, fits bottom of keyway, but I would never use it for that. I would use top of keyway, fits perfectly there. Last but not, le not least, our Asa Abloy, Asa 700 with the side uh, bar, side pins here. It fits, let's see if it fits bottom of keyway. Doesn't fit there, but that's not how I pick this lock anyways, because I have to I have the sidebar element there. I need to be able to put top of keyway there, and I need to be able to have access to those finger pins on the left, whatever it is, finger pins or wafers, I don't remember. Anyways, I digress. They did a really smart thing, and they were like, hey, let's see how many locks this will fit. And they did that with the 40 thousandths. They could not have gotten away with that if this was a 50 thousandths tool. And that is what it is. What more do you need out of a tool set for $9.50? You get the lock, you get the two picks for raking and single pin picking, and you get the turning tool. Here's the deal. When I teach people how to pick locks, I have this method I call the Sandman method, and it's a rule of thumb. And some people may agree with it in the comments, some people may not, but my rule of thumb is this. Ha, huh, I'm bleeding. That was my mistake. Um, my rule of thumb is this. If you are going to rake a lock, you always use bottom of keyway. So if I'm gonna rake, I always use bottom of keyway. If I'm going to single pin pick a lock, I'm gonna use top of keyway so I can have bottom, up, bottom space here for picking. Why is this important? Well, if I'm gonna to try to rake this lock, there's a good chance I'm probably just going to pull out my turning tool while raking if it's in top of the keyway. Alternatively, if I am in bottom of keyway turning tension and I try to single pin pick this lock, I'm going to overset the first three to five pins in this seven pin lock. It's not going to work out well for me. That is what the Sandman method is about. This is the ultimate set of tools for the beginner for learning the Sandman method. I highly recommend it. I don't know how else to what else to add to this. I'm a big fan of covert instruments. I love all things coming from covert instruments. Um, I can't compare this to anything else on the market because one, I don't collect lower end tools or inexpensive tools. I collect high end tools. I collect the best tools in the market. It just so happens that this is also some of the best tools you can buy on the market hands down. I do have though the Genesis pick set, which is an expansion of the FNG. So we have three turning tools, 30, 40, and 50 thou. We have two rakes, one's perfect for padlocks, one is perfect for residential locks, and we have a short hook, and then we have a rounded hook for deeper uh, pins, pins that are a uh, high-low cut. And then I also have the Echelon pick set, and um, I'm not gonna try to guess at the price of this because it varies uh, depending on the time of year, but this is an expansion to the Genesis pick set. So if you are purchasing the Genesis pick set and you're like, ah, I wanna expand and I buy the Echelon, there's not a single duplicate tool between the two of them. They complement each other, no duplicates whatsoever. However, if you are buying the FNG, the FNG is essentially half of the Genesis pick set. So if you buy the FNG, then buy the, uh, the Genesis pick set, you're essentially going to duplicate three of the tools out of seven of the tools that are in this. But um, there's no duplicates from the Echelon. And then also I have the Arbiter Bypass Kit, which is the best bypass kit on the market to date, hands down. I did a 40 minute video arguing why this is the best. Uh, set on the market. All of these cases are super magnetic, so everything's sticking to my case so you don't lose your tools. How cool is that? That's all I have for today. Um, let me know in the comments down below. Do you like the FNG? Do you own the FNG? What was your first starter set? That's the question. What was your first starter set? And what do you think the F how do you think the FNG compares to your starter set? You know, like, do you wish you had the FNG when you're first starting out? Or do you say, nah, I really liked my first starter set and I just moved on from there. Let me know in the comments down below. I'm interested. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you're new here, hit subscribe. And as always, you can pick your friends and you can pick your nose, but you cannot pick any locks that are in use and do not pick, pick any locks that you do not have the expressed permission to do so. My friends, that is it. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.